All right. So now that I've introduced you and show you about well, all the element, let's see about the arrangement and how I've made things working together. So yeah, like, like I told you, once I have my drums and I have my noise, I st my noise, sorry, <laughs> I start to look for something to have like kind of the spine of your track, the, the backbone of your track, and I found out this harp. So obviously uh, it's gonna evolve along the track. So yeah, let's start from the beginning actually. So first you got just the drum, just the kick and the ambience and some SFX playing. You have, uh, yes, let me show you on the mix down. I've got some FX like for General Maxter. You have a locker that when I put it at the beginning and then voila, classic DJ, it's kind of DJ effect. And then the rider is the same, it's like kind of uh, your sound is going in a lot of delay and reverb like like a dj stuff and so yeah intro is just the kick and the ambience and then i remove the lockouts and uh i have the hat straight away like the clothes i had open i had checker this is very from one track to another but for this one was like this then Next part, I start to introduce slowly, slowly the the arpeggiator, FX between. Yeah, I try to always add a new element every eight bar, as you can see. Then I add the clap. So the uh, sorry. So yeah, the cutoff starts to modulating as well. So I have the same, like go down a little bit, and then go up, and then go down again. And then last part before the the first short break is I introduce the the ride. Yeah, like it's really like to introduce the sound and start to bring something, start to bring a bit of tension and a bit of the the main idea of the track. And then come uh, the first break where all the first main center arrive. So you always have this one or like who's gonna introduce every every bar. And so here I've created a kind of groove with the scent and the perk, as you can see. And that's working really well with the drum. And let me explain. Like so, this one. It's like here is the kick basically. Here is your kick, and it's playing like just basically after your kick and just before the one the off beat. And this get this get a nice groove, and especially. When after you use this one is more or less the same technique. So basically your kick is supposed to be here, right there. So you put one just before is the and like this you get this nice. Let me solo it. This nice like um rhythmic effect. And then so then together Now you see when I'm coming. And then I had a last one. Same. This one is off beat. And yeah, like this you got your rhythm. So yeah, for this small break, a little snare roll. Um, so snare roll, what I like to do is like starting sim like simple. And like kind of having a roll, but with not that many notes. And then the more you go, the more you add notes, and for on the end, like to be like completely full. And obviously, good things to bring tension is to open the cutoff of the ARP, or in general, all of the scent you have. And yeah, let me check in. And a bit of this washout effect as well. You're gonna see bringing 
overall reverb. And the mass effect of course. So yeah, very important thing to do is like the cutoff from your up if you make it going up, bring it back, bring it back and at low cutoff. And you have this kind of it's making an like, I cannot explain why if it's like a di di dynamic stuff or and then yeah, first kind of drop. Then we add the clap. Keep modulating the up to make things interesting. That's that's as well this part what I've done with the clap because usually it's just playing like every two kick and on the last one. This pattern is kind of mini drum feel who make it things more interesting and help as well to transition to like help as well to add a new element here is the ride. And what is helping that as well is by opening the cutoff as well and by using the right effects like for example yeah that's a very good thing like if you want to introduce the ride uh put your ride in a lot of reverb make a ride sfx and then you reverse and just before just before the ride starting you can just take the ride and reverse it actually yeah, but Usually it's something too dry, so I prefer to use a reverb one. And it's more subtle if you use a reverb one. And yeah, so the part with the rise coming, operator still modulating, then playing together, responding to each other, and then... We come to the main break. So the cut, usually the cut, I don't cut everything. Like, you can still hear the kick. Uh, yeah, usually I, I always do like a couple of, of of measure with the kick and then after I remove it just to avoid like a, a too brutal uh, transition. Sometimes you can just cut the trim and it's working, but sometimes not. And then I introduce the main lead. Well, I can see I have a reverse scent as well. To introduce it like I showed you before. Then here jump here to stop and then I like no any more drum element except the snare roll is gonna come progressively. Everything is going down a little bit. Here this part is like kind of let's put the bass Okay, like quiet, quiet moment, it puts the bass. You do it that for four bar or something like this, and then up you start to build the tension and 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 you build. Up. See, open the cutoff. You see, like this, this four bar was like where it's quiet, and then after start to build up slowly and as well on the mix down. And same thing with the snare, sorry for the cut, like at the beginning to the pattern you like and then add more notes uh, as it come. And the more you go there the more notes you have and it's the more yeah hit you have and just like to accentuate the kind of uh, tension or stress effect. All right, so just before there, you can see, so here you have this one, this rider, so which is basically dropping everything into a lot of reverb and and the delay. And uh, you have as well 
two other things you have this one which is this AQ basically and it's basically like a it's like I'm not gonna do it with the mouth but it's like giving a very short swap effect just to kind of accentuate okay it's it's coming now you know like this kind of uh, I, I don't know how to explain and then another little trick it's um, with the stereo width I bring it so it's 100 percent and I'm going to bring it a little bit more no and then when it's drop when the sound starts again 100 percent so like this you have your signal which is going mono so it's it sounds like kind of weak a little bit and and then after when the sound is dropping puff you have all the stereo or the full image stereo and you can see it's getting anyway it's getting very louder with all the effects so by putting in mono it's like a kind of reducing the gain and it's as well making it narrow and and because it's just before the drop it doesn't really it's not really important you know like you have a, a lose of stereo you don't really pay attention because there is so many elements ar arriving in the same time but it's still there and it's really effective when you drop your song and then uh, you get your full stereo <laughs> Especially when you have a sent horn like this, which is like super stereo and... Alright. And then the drop, yeah, just the kick. And with the up, of course. Up, same thing than before. You open and you close it when it's dropping. And then, so this part is a bit particular. I uh, usually, I always create the song on session mode and then after I record it live in the arrangement view and usually I have more most of my elements I've got them there but for this one uh, I didn't have that part at first and I created it after all after I, I I arranged everything because the thing is so you hear this lead but to don't get bored of this lead I, I, I didn't want it to drop it with this sound you know I wanted to bring it back later to don't always hear the same melody or the track and to don't hear it too much because after you get very quickly bored of that melody or that, that hook or whatever you call it so I've made this kind of bridge part I mean it's like kind of drop bridge before to hear again the main lead um, and it's based on the same principle than uh, before you know it's like elements responding to each other you've got basically send fx send shot and clap so you see you got you got this sweeping effect which is going we have a pan with as a pan of automation so you go you can see it's going from the left to the right obviously the next one is changing to add a bit of variation then you have some clap who are in the middle but if you take this one they are you see they are pan left right left right left right stereo and you have uh and this one is the same you see you have like a a pan a panning effect and this one the second one is a bit shorter and the same the panning is always like the opposite you see like here is up there is down up down and same here up down up and so that is responding to each other and and it's getting this nice groove that's a common thing i i don't know that was a one time i don't know if he's still using it but jay Lumen was using this kind of stuff all the time you know like you kind of really never have uh the time to breathe or the time to have you always have a new element when when it's finished Still, like kind of responding to each other like a ping pong uh, respond to each other and then so you add the hats adding the shaker and 
then I made a short break and now I'm introducing again uh, the main lead. Straight away I add the clap and I get rid of all of this element like who was like used as the bridge. I just keep some here and there but it's more looking like this part so basically then here you have like this part plus this part together so yeah here a lot uh i pass filter as you can see The first eight bar like was without descent, and then you have the break, short break here to introduce them, and then you have. Yeah, at least it's responding like this. You have big center melody. on and fx2 and then the second part is exactly the same pattern but instead of fx2 you got this clap so it's always like changing and on top of that you have you have drums that are coming on this part which is like there is always variation every eight eight bar except for that one basically where it's the right because it's kind of the climax of the track or like the most important part which is a 16 bar <laughs> and then you got this kind of break uh, outro break i call it but because it's not really the end of the song at that point, but you just get rid of the main lead and the uh, other lead. Yeah. So good, good things to do that always. Put a, a look at and Yeah, that spot is kind of a pre outro. Let's say it's not really like it's not yet the moment where the DJ is gonna start to uh, to mix the track. Or I mean, he can start now, but and then you reduce. The drum slowly and you reduce the element that's how to slowly slowly getting rid of the element here is the same up. turn off turn off the up by uh turning down the low pass filter and yeah after you end just with the kick. So yeah, basically that's the the arrangement and how all the ID came. I think I didn't forget anything about the arrangement. So yeah, let's talk quickly about mixing. So as you can see, I usually mix as I go. And for this one, I, I just like kind of, the, the mixing part was like to get rid of the bad frequency and sometimes I was just like uh, yeah I was like you see removing was just EQing and maybe adding some saturation here and there but just like to make things a bit brighter or louder and 
yeah usually it's very i mean for me mix, mixing is it's not that it's not important but in for me in electronic music 95 percent of your mix is depending of uh which sound you choose like which which drums or which sample you're gonna use and which scent you're gonna use and you have to be careful of like the scent you use are going well together and that's what's gonna make you mix good and your life easier it's like for recording music you know people who are doing who are mixing recording music like with uh battery and uh and electric guitar or acoustic guitar singer and it's very important to have a very good recording and you cannot make good mixing with a bad recording music and here's the same it's like if you if you pissed are not like sounding good individually not like clear but like sounding good together and it's not gonna work so that's why you have to be careful to pick up elements that are not on the same frequency range and or if they are like trying to pan them in a way like they are no masking each other but usually that is more like artistic stuff it's like i mean for me it's more of the same step but uh, yeah so let's just quick go into the master uh, that's kind of it's not really i mean it's not a master it's i said that it's not very professional properly master but it's a good it's a good start you know you can master this and play in the club it's it's totally fine uh so yeah let's see so first it's utility just to make the bass in mono because when you're gonna play on the club it's the bass gonna be in mono so you have you have to do that then glue compression yeah that's just to glue a little bit together i have a little bit of gain as well cutting a little bit of some of the um, peaks and then the IQ is just usually i always boost i always boost like yeah around around the kick just to add a little bit more of body i always boost the high end i usually boost as well a little bit around two kilohertz and remove around 400 hertz which is the muddy phase and here i decide to put a little bit around 180 probably because it was sounding good and yeah but all the time just use like very slight gain it's like one maximum 2 db i think you shouldn't go higher uh, except don't do like me i mean like except maybe for this one but still very go slightly and don't abuse don't make a very uh, surgical EQ is, is, is if, if you have to do that, I mean, your mix is, is no correct and you have to go back. And then a bit of saturation, that is very subtle. Yeah. Let me put where that is. It's very subtle and then limit limiter is just to smash and squash and for loudness purpose so you might ask why i use two limiter in chain i don't know i've probably seen once that someone who was doing that i'm not really sure it's 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 really working but i'm still doing it honestly and yeah i don't really know but I still keep doing this because sometimes it works. And yes, that's it. I think I show you everything. Just this return track I didn't use it is because when I do live stream I use a template and uh, that was in the template but i didn't use it if you wonder about what is this mix down uh, i've made a video where i explained that the link appear in the corner right now and yeah i think that's it i think i show you everything uh thank you very much for watching this guy i hope you learned a couple of stuff uh if you want to know if the date
So yeah, I hope you like it, guy. Uh, if you're interested by the template, the link is in the description. Uh, if you like the samples that I use, uh, you can go on my website and buy them as well. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, do not hesitate to to uh, comment if you have any question. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, see you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching.